Okay, so we are going to spend some time in Fusion. Uh, we'll walk through the entire comp, um, the script, and uh, we'll start with the backplate. We'll remove the car and then base compositing with the backplate and the engine elements that came from um, Maya. Uh, we'll use 3D space in Fusion to um, look at the elements that we brought from Maya in um, FBX form and also in uh, Olympic. Uh, cache form uh, then we'll generate particles inside of a 3d uh, environment of fusion um, and those particles will um, at the end particularly when there is a big puff of uh, steam coming out uh, there will be some shadow that will cast onto the platform um, so yeah it's uh, quite a bit in fusion so let's uh, get started um, this is the uh, script um, that will start from the left to the right. So um, I have uh, divided this into a few parts. Um, the initial part here is going to be just the backplate and the uh, Maya uh, elements that came in by way of the rendered images. So that's basically the engine, the um, ambient uh, occlusion uh, layer and the shadow layer that came uh, from uh, Maya. So we look at that. Then um, we'll also do the light wrap just so that the engine integrates a little better with the environment uh, of the station. Um, and also we'll do the edge blur so that the edge of the um, engine is not super sharp. Otherwise it would look like it is superimposed on the, um, um, on the actual image. Um, and then we'll look at some of the 3D uh, elements that came in by way of the FBX. Um, that would be the gate that you see here on the left hand um, side. Um, the signs, uh, if you remember, we had uh, replaced the signs uh, of um, the name of the station. Um, that all is happening here. And then uh, finally we'll get into the particles and these are the particles uh, created for steam and smoke. Um, so yes, that's the basically the full comp. Um, let's go to the uh, far left hand side and see what we have. So this is the JPEG file. It's a an ultra HD uh, resolution. Um, this is uh, too much of a resolution for my system. So uh, at uh, one point I'll um, resize it to uh, HD sooner rather rather than later. The other thing is that this is a um, uh, sRGB file, it's a JPEG, and um, uh, Fusion is going to work with linear because um, I prefer that. I think most people would uh, prefer linear workflow, but also the images that are coming from Maya are uh, open EXR and they are all uh, linear. So we'll have to remove gamma, basically. That's what it comes down to, which is already baked into um, this uh, image sequence okay so that's the, um, the the first node and then it goes into mocha and in mocha basically what's happening is that it's uh, removing the car so if you um, let me get mocha in this image here now this one has a lot so i'm uh, going to remove the lot for now because we haven't removed gamma uh, from the um, image yet um, so let me come to a point where there is car. Um, let's see. So that's the blue car that is coming uh, right there. And uh, it's still rendering. So um, we'll have to see how it looks. Yeah. So now um, you will see that that car is basically removed as soon as this uh, image uh, is updated now. Um, you can see that the car is supposed to be here, but it's replaced with the uh, pixel in, in pixels in the back. Um, I have done another video on uh, how to remove cars um, using Mocha, so we'll not uh, go through the entire uh, workflow. Um, I'll just uh, fire up Mocha and just uh, show you, you know, what's going on there. Uh, but beyond that, we will not look at um, the um, the actual uh, removing of the car. Yeah, so let's go to the input um, tab here. Um, so this is uh, basically the uh, the workflow. Um, if you look at, uh, if I go into the car, so that's the car that I have masked. 
and it's a very loose mask and i don't need a very uh, uh, refined mask here uh, what is important is that i identify the object that i want to remove in every frame and as you see it's um, it's going through the pretty much the entire shot until that car is uh, visible and on this side also so um so that's the car that i have identified the next thing i need to look at is the background and this is the background that uh, um, mocha will use to find the appropriate pixels to replace the pixels that it's going to remove from um, from that particular frame um, if i change this to um, this uh, here you can see that you know the difference is what um, mocha is going to look at now when i when i track this both of them i made sure that the perspective is um, there because there is a little bit of perspective shift in my camera and if you have this uh, enabled then the distortion uh, when they replace the pixels in the remove module is going to be minimal um, sometimes you still have to make adjustments but in my case it was perfectly fine so that's how i removed it now i didn't render everything here in the um, in mocha basically what i did uh, we don't need to save um oh sorry uh don't save so what i did is um i kept the render flag on here and uh, made sure that i mean remove module in uh, mocha and it at every frame it will remove the car on the fly here um, now my machine is a little bit slower for this kind of workflow um so it took a bit to um you know look even visualize the whole thing but that's the idea that you have a car here and the car is gone here because of this render right so the next thing is uh, um, linear workflow um, so in this gamut uh, I'm removing the gamma curve and there that's why the image becomes very dark so I have to use the sRGB um, LUT and that's the activating of the LUT here so this both images are looking the same but one has gamma curve baked into that the other one doesn't okay so from there i did slight color correction to um, get the mood in the uh, in the scene so that's the backplate uh, workflow that we did and then i resized to um, to a um, uh, hd resolution so that um, i can run through the rest of the uh, process here now that image, the backplate, is now branched into di different areas and the one that goes to the top, it's um, going into this blur uh, node. Now this is quite a bit of blur, so if you look at that, um, it, it's this is how it looks. And um, the reason why, now I need to turn on the gamma, um, I mean the LUT here as well. So the reason why I'm blurring this is because that is going to help me with the light wrap. So um, if I go to this node here, you will see that there is this engine that already has the light wrap applied to that. And the light wrap is coming through this um, few nodes. Um, I'll post a, a link to a very good tutorial that I saw um, years ago on how to do light wrap work in um, Fusion. And I'm sure there are other tutorials out there. So basically, I have a um, I have the engine Beauty Pass, which is this one, and this engine is going into um, a uh, let's see, this is the color corrector. Yeah, so I uh, use a little bit of color correction to make this engine look um, similar to the background, and then from that color correction, uh, it branches off into different areas. So the one goes into this uh, mat control. And this mat control um, has um, uh, alpha. So if I go into alpha, you see that it is quite blurred, you know, alpha. And that blurred alpha gets com it gets combined into another mat control where the combination is um, uh, combined alpha. And I'm subtracting one from the other. And that creates this inward uh, fuzzy uh, edges on the... Uh, image and that is what is going to be responsible for the light wrap um, so when you merge that uh, and, and you bring that as a mask on this merge 
and the merge has uh, basically your engine on one side and the blurred image on the other side and both of them when come, they come together they create the light wrap now you may not be able to see it properly but if i change the blur here you will be able to see how light wrap is applied so this is no light wrap at all this one has slight light wrap and then it, you can just decide you know how much of the light wrap you want now that is for the integration of engine into the uh, backplate uh, so that it looks uh, believable um, the other flow that is uh, also necessary uh, with um, uh, with regards to the integration is um, actually this uh, pipe that goes on the other side all the way um, into this area here which is for the edge blur and what that does um, if I just uh, look at this node here it's the engine and, and that engine goes into the filter and this filter is um, basically called uh, well it's filter but the filter type is uh, Sobel and what Sobel does if you um, look at alpha um, you actually have the outline of the image um, that it creates. Now this outline has one um, characteristic that if you take your mouse and put on the edge, um, you will see that the alpha val uh, the value of that color is um, all over the place. And uh, let me uh, get my pen out in a minute as soon as I have uh, a pixel that I want to show you. Um, let me get this white. Yeah. So now, if you look at the uh, the bottom of the screen, um, and I'll circle where I want you to see is right here. This is where the value is, and you can see that this value is greater than two, and that is happening because um, the uh, the value that is uh, uh, coming from this uh, uh, pixel is not capped. Um, and there is no uh, clipping of that so I have applied a brightness contrast tool in which I am clipping white for alpha and that after you uh, apply that um, and you again do the same thing and put your mouse here um, we need to visualize that um, you basically see that you are clipped to uh, 1.0 at the max so um, the over brightness is gone now uh, and then you blur it a little bit and that blurred uh, edges will go into another blur um, but this <clears throat> as a mask and in that node um, the incoming image is um, is from the uh, from the other side which is the merged image of uh, both elements together so if you see that um, and look at the color channel you basically have an integrated engine that has light wrap and also the blurred edge so it uh, it uh, kind of incorporates it uh, incorporates it better in um, in the images okay so um, so that's the integration of the engine so far but there is still one more thing that or two more things actually that we haven't seen yet um, in there uh, if I go all the way to the uh, front here um, so we had this image right so this is the resize node let me get rid of that uh, circle we don't need to see that anymore um so then i have the uh, shadow pass that came from um, maya and it's a um, polygon that was applied onto the ground and it had the background uh, material applied to that so um, it casted all this uh, image on that um, but then um, there is uh, the shadow. This is the actual shadow that was casted on this uh, image um, using the directional light in, uh, in Maya. And we don't need all this other thing. So um, I created a uh, mask just for the, um, uh, for the shadow. And that is applied to the uh, matte control tool here. And a um, little bit of brightness and contrast just to um, adjust that. And that is now looking at um, in, in in front of the back plate. This is how it looks. So um, so if you look at the uh, the back plate and the um, um, 
this uh, particular um, node merge node you basically see that the um, the shadow is all you have there is no train there is nothing just the shadow and that shadow is going to be merged with the train here so you have the train and the shadow coming together and then slight color correction to integrate it better and then it goes into the pipeline further now this workflow here that we are going to step into now um, is going to be all 3d but before that um, let me also show you the uh, um, ambient occlusion which is um, just the engine without any um, anything on it it's just, it's just ambient occlusion pass um, that actually um, I also did a render onto the um, uh, onto the tracks so it's just the ambient occlusion uh, engine that is just coming on the track just to see you know how it uh, it would look um, yeah so then we come to this 3d uh, workflow after that and um, this is for the uh, for the names mainly name of the engine uh, I mean the uh, um, station so you look at the starting point here that says Murray Hill and what idea is that I want to change that from Murray Hill to uh, Moritzburg so that's just the text that I created in um, uh, fusion um, but more importantly you have the the back color that is coming from a JPEG image um, this color is corrected a few times and um, here it is corrected so that it would look more um, acceptable for um, for this particular uh, location um, I used a, um, a paint node um, let me zoom into this so that you see why I did that you see this little sticky that is um, on the um, lower left hand corner and I wanted to have that also overlapping onto my image so I did the uh, the paint node to take out that uh, corner um, so make that corner transparent basically um, from there it um, goes actually into this merge node where the um, the uh, the text is coming from the top and that merge then uh, is applied to a, um, a Lambert and um, it's this Lambert that has you know the um, um, basically the um, the text and that text then uh, from the Lambert it goes um, into this uh, um, station name which is the um, um the 3d object that came from maya this is the fbx uh, model and if you look at where it is um let's just go around and see yeah there it is so um that is the um yeah so that's the um the sign that um that we are looking at and uh, if you go further into uh, you know where it ends up which is this root node it's just the 3d merge node um, there is an ambient light that i have applied um, but there is also the camera that came from uh, maya and, and that camera is uh, used at six or seven different places so it's coming all the way from here and there are branching it's branching over here And it comes uh, at few different places um, throughout this comp because we have several places where we need to render the image through that camera so um, for us it comes to this uh, root node and if I look at the root node here you can see that the camera is actually looking at the sign and it's exactly um, the same camera that you have here in the original image from the location standpoint and uh, because it came from synthize right um, the tracked camera and then that camera if you render that out you know you see the image and that image is exactly where this image is so um, if you um, I I'll look at this merge in a bit but if you merge that over the um, actual image now you see that the name is replaced right 
So um, because the camera that is rendering this is the same as the original camera through uh, Synthize, um, when you um, are moving your camera, this uh, image is going to track pretty well on the um, on the actual um, uh, sign, uh, as you can see here. And also, if you uh, zoom in at this point uh, slightly, um, you will see that. Um, that sticky is right there on top of the image so um, yeah so that was the workflow for the uh, for one of the images anyway now there are a few of them um, and the others are also coming from different areas so if I go uh, and follow the, um, the images from the top and the text um, you see that um, you know there are other locations where um, you know this is that this image is are coming uh, into this root node so it's the same root node that we just looked at but if you just um, go around um, and let me look at it from the other side so you can see um, you know what's going on so you see here you uh, are able to see a few of the um, of the images in the back right there this is the the last one in the um uh in the shot and there are a couple of them on the other side you, you can't really see properly here um i think the best way is if i read, uh, look through this camera so now if i go um further into the shot you can see that these images are right there and they are exactly where the stand is for for the uh, name in the original shot and um yeah, so that's, um, you know, that's that. Now, the reason why there is a merge node here before it goes into the actual merge is because I needed this um, engine to block this uh, images because uh, this this names are on the other side of the track. So when the, tra when the engine is passing by, you know, they should block the um, uh, this sign and that's what you see uh, happening here. So the sign that was rendered if you look at this render node here there's the sign and there's another sign there but then when you merge it with the engine engine is blocking that right so that's the sign now the other 3d elements that you see here um that's the um the gate uh, for the railroad crossing so um if you uh this is the uh not the perspective let's go to perspective view and you see that gate right there that's the um uh that's the gate that you that you will be able to see when um you are rendering it out this gate came from uh maya by the way we built this in maya and it's an fbx model that came here so uh, if you look at the rendered version of that uh, gate it's right there and then it's uh, basically going to be right here so if you look at where it's merging um, in this image um, it's still just the uh, uh, engine and the gate but if you go further down you can see that the gate is right there where it's supposed to be okay so uh, that's the 3d if you go up here um, there is another box that is not connected in any way but I'm using this as a reference this is the alembic uh, file that came in so if I look at um, this particular node into the viewport you see that um, it seems that there are a few um, couple of objects and um, these objects are basically um, the uh, the actual locations of um, the top of the engine and the side of the engine where I want the steam and the smoke um, to come from. So if I um, play this out, let me um, put the uh, 3D in both of them so that um, So now you can see that as I'm scrubbing through the timeline here, those two objects are moving and that's exactly where the train was, right? So train, imagine the train is in between these two objects. If I look at it from the top, um, 
this is the top of the engine this is the side of the engine these are the objects that i created in maya and brought them into fusion by alembic and that's what you have so what i got basically for that is the transform node you know that i needed to uh, see exactly where the location is of those objects where i can then emit the uh, particles from and this one here is the um, location of the um, uh, of the top right so that's all i needed um i didn't need uh, the actual you know anything from maya i could have made locators in maya and brought the locators here and that would serve the same purpose um so basically how i used it uh, let's uh, work with this top um let me pin it so it will stay um <clears throat> the way i worked with this is um when the time came for um, particles which is way up here um, there is one particle that says the um, particle smoke coming from the top i think that's the one yeah so um, i'll use this as an example exactly i used for the um, steam but for this one um, let's take a look at this um, node here which is the particle emitter node so if i select that um, because I already have pinned the other uh, node, you can still see it here. And you can see that in that Alembic node, there is animation going on um, for the translation. And that basically is the position um, in 3D space. So it would be cool if I can uh, also get my particles to follow these objects. And the way I did that is I created expressions here for translation of the particles and those particles are following exactly where um, the object is so if you look at the values these values are exactly matching and, and you probably know how to do this but you just right click create expression and then drag this onto something that you want to uh, attach this to so if you bring it here then this rotation is going to be following exactly the values that you have here now we don't need this so i'll just go ahead and remove right so let's look at the um the, the particle itself in this node here um we'll have to wait for it to render you can see that the rendering is happening here for that particle Yeah, so now you can see what is going on with uh, with the smoke. That's the smoke that is coming from the top of the uh, engine. And um, it's animated slightly so that it looks like it's um, making this pattern with the um, with the chugging, chugging noise. Um, it's not exactly matched, but it, you know, optically it would look cool, you know, if you make this kind of variations. Um, but as I scrub, you know through this timeline um and we again have to wait for the render you will see that the smoke actually is following the object yeah so you see the smoke uh moved back and, and that's exact workflow that i used for um for i don't need to pin this um, exact workflow that I use for the um, uh, for the steam so if you look at the um, steam that is coming from the bottom right if I uh, emit it uh, uh, if I take that emitter here then you will see as soon as it's rendered you see that the, the particles are right there and and that's the um, that's the steam that is coming from one side of the uh, engine and there is um, exactly the same thing happening with the other side um, and uh, also the whistle uh, has the same thing i'll show you that in a bit but before i do that let's look at what the steam and the smoke are comprised of so if you look at the emitter itself it's um, a uh, a bitmap uh, type style um, uh, particles and bitmap always has this input that you have to plug something in and in this case I'm using the um, fast noise, right? So if I take a look at this fast noise um, and um, let me just put it in both so that 
you can actually see it real time and that um, pattern that is changing here that's because of um, the the seed rate that I have applied to this um, node and then it goes into the brightness and contrast just to make a little more contrasty and then uh, this um, mask is basically is giving a slight variation of that brightness and contrast between the top and the uh, bottom here because it goes in as a mask uh, and that is applied to the um, to the emitter so when you um, you take the emitter into the viewport and uh, let's see you can see that the um, this steam is coming out and, and towards the end you can see that the steam is actually uh, quite big because that's when um, a lot of steam is released so um, so you can see you know where it's coming from so if I look through the actual camera here uh, here you don't have the camera you need to go down you need to look at this node here and you see this camera let's look at look through that camera and you can see how the um, steam is following the, the track and this is exactly what would have happened if you um, if you were to look at uh, any other steam or smoke um, it, you would see it following um, the same path okay so that's that um, let's see what else uh, let me look at the um, the whistle um, the whistles are right yeah whistles puffs are right here so if I look at this emitter here, it will tell me where the puffs are. So these are the animations, right, in, um, in timeline. So if I put my um, time here, and then if I want to look at this particular node, and it's rendering, um, we should be able to see the... Um, puff right there so that's the uh, tiny puff that took place when um, the whistle was blowing and, and there are a couple of places actually you see that there is uh, one right around here as well I think yeah so that's the um, that's the puff Right, so that's again. Um, I use the uh, alembic object to follow, you know, the uh, the location where I wanted this to come out from. Um, yeah, so that's uh, all the particles. And now, lastly, I want to show you. It it may not look very um, convincing in this script because um, it, it's really a subtle change. But if I go, uh, let me first go to the. Uh, location where you'll be able to see it I think it may be 783 frame I believe that's where you will see um, there is a workflow here for the um, um, shadow of the large steam that uh, was coming out at the end so um, if I look at this it's just the the ground plane uh, just a simple plane uh, where the shadow is to be casted then I used a spotlight um, because spotlight is the only light in uh, fusion that has the shadow capabilities and if I put both of them in here um, you also have the um, steam coming in here from this node here and then the camera is also coming here um, and if I let me just turn on the uh, light here so here you can see that because of the light that is um, uh, on this um, uh, smoke or the steam, there is shadow also casted at the uh, at the bottom. So I needed to isolate this shadow shadow from um, from the uh, everything else in the scene. So what I did is basically um, that's the merge that you're looking at. Um, I rendered out one image. Um, that didn't have the shadow and then I rendered out another image that had the shadow so you see a very subtle difference between the two and all I needed was the shadow so if I could combine both of them and set this uh, merge node to a difference it should only give me the difference between those two and that's the shadow that you see um, down here 
and then I applied brightness and contrast tool on that just to uh, uh, highlight a little better what the shadow is. And then I created a, a mask from there, and that's the bitmap uh, mask. And then one background, which is just a simple black, black um, background, and I limited that background's visibility to the area where there is shadow, right? So this is the opacity. Um, and if I do that, then this is where you may not be able to see exactly what's going on. Um, I mean, you see in alpha that there is certainly shadow here or something, um, but in the uh, actual image, it's um, very subtle. You can see the darkness here and that shadow then, this is the rendered shadow, right? And that shadow is merged onto the um, uh, plate with uh, everything. And there you can see down at the below here, tiny shadow that is casted onto the ground. So that really looks nice when you play this through that there is steam and there is shadow. And even though shadow, we didn't think about shadow in uh, Maya, um, well, actually the whole uh, particle system is created in fusion so um, so that's where you have to think about uh, how to uh, create shadow but that's how you know it came out and then finally everything is coming together in um, in this final node now again we have to apply gamma tool to add gamma so if I take this it's gonna look super bright as soon as all the nodes are rendered Yeah, so it's super bright, so we have to um, disengage um, lookup table. And now you can see um, how the uh, how it would look, right? So that's the that's the total uh, comp in um, in Fusion. Let's go over to um, DaVinci Resolve and see what's going on. Now, what I did is I created a few um, uh, renders. So this is the final image but then I also did a render for just the elements and if you go further down you will see that there are other renders um, let's look for one right here so this is the one that has just a shadow and then there is one that you saw that has just the ambient occlusion um, pass. So I'll combine all of these in um, DaVinci Resolve to show you basically just one after the other. So let's uh, look at it there. Okay, so we are in um, DaVinci Resolve and I'm in the edit um, workflow. So um, let me just play it so you can see the whole thing. So I'm starting with the original shot, which is the Murray Hill uh, train station name. And then you will see it will change the name and, and go from there. So let's just, I, I have removed the um, um, audio for now. You know, I've muted all the tracks. Um, I mean, you have heard enough of that whistle, I think. Um, okay, so there it goes, change the name and uh it's a little choppy but uh let's see how it works out um yeah so that's the ambient occlusion engine then these are just the elements just the uh, steam and now everything um, all together um and these are all the renders that um, that i was talking about so let me create a little bit more gaps so you can see um, everything together so here is the name change the name and just the shadow then just the ambient occlusion and then just the smoke and then everything together um, if I if I um, show you more of the engine um, in ambient occlusion, you will be able to see that uh, rigging that we did in Maya. Um, so you will see it when it comes the yeah. So now you can look at the um, the wheels. 
yeah so that worked out quite well in terms of um, the motion and the spinning and everything and the um, um, the entire um, uh, uh, piston workflow so um, if I mute this and this you will be able to see ambient occlusion pass all the way through and uh, take a look at the piston this time You see how it's uh, pushing in and coming out. Yeah. Okay, so that does it. Um, that basically is um, everything that I wanted to show you. Um, I hope uh, this was uh, entertaining. A little bit longer than normal, but uh, there is a lot going on, in, especially in fusion. So um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for keeping up with it. Okay, um, so I'll close it here and uh, hope to bring some more uh, videos soon. Thanks, be safe.